The following is a Just Green production brought to you by the Might Be News Network. Listen, before we start this episode, I, Kevin Reeve, still on mute. I just want to tell everyone out there that's listening, this is the one and only time, the one and only time that I'm going to say it from here on out. I will deny it and I will argue with you. Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time. The following is a Just Green production brought to you by the Might Be News Network. What's up, everybody? It's the week of February 20... Or, shit, February 8th, 2000. I fucked up. <laughs> okay. Hey. It's the fucking week of February 8th, 2021. I'm not going to edit that out because I don't really give a shit if people laugh at me or make fun of me like they did when I made my cel- celebratory Peyton Manning Hall of Fame status on Facebook. People trashed me because I said he's the GOAT, in my opinion. And uh, it just mm-hmm. so happened to be the same day that Brady played in his one millionth Super Bowl. Sorry, with me as always, Kevin Reevy. What's up, Reevy? Anything is possible! <laughs> <laughs> this show's a fucking mess already, and it's my fault. Listen, to build off of what I said in the beginning, um... It's been an unpopular opinion that Tom Brady's a mediocre at best quarterback, and that's the opinion that I've had for about a decade. And um, I understand that I've always been wrong. I understand that um, Peyton Manning is not a superior quarterback to, to Tom Brady. I understand all of the stats and all of these things, but Peyton Manning's always going to be my favorite quarterback ever. It's just I enjoyed watching him. But this episode and this episode only, he's not my go to the week, but Tom Brady, if winning Super Bowls is what qualifies you as the greatest of all time, then it's very obvious that it's Tom Brady. Okay? Get off my dick. Congratulations. Get off my dick. Can I live, people? Can I live? Hey, I, I feel you. You know, it takes... Once you go down that road of admitting you're wrong... It just starts to feel good. And it's okay. Just get it all off my chest. You know, I was wrong. I admitted where I was wrong about the coronavirus at multiple times. And fortunately for me, we've all been very wrong about the that in that particular subject many yeah. times during this yeah. twelve month plus. Sure. But um beyond that, I mean Carson Wentz, if we're gonna stick to quarterbacks, yeah. Carson Wentz, yeah. if if we dial it back to twelve months ago. I was the biggest Carson Wentz guy. Same. I believed in him. I thought he was going to have a great year. Same. Five weeks in, six weeks in, seven weeks in, I still thought Carson Wentz was going to turn it around. I (laughs) reached a point where I had to say, okay, I was wrong. And then not only say you're wrong, but then I had to double down and say, okay, not only am I wrong, I was really wrong, and the Eagles need to trade him. Right, right. Because – I still think there's some value there and you can't afford to have him have one more year like this. So I was so on the Wentz trade train, you know, keep him great deal. You signed him long-term. Awesome. Stick with him. He's going to be great long-term to now just trade him and cut your losses. Sometimes you got to do that. And it feels good because in the long term, sometimes you get rewarded. And that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> What's the thing? So, hey, sometimes it works out. Sometimes it works out. I was really, really hoping that Tom Brady wouldn't win another one. Um, obviously, that was just a fantasy world. And a um, uh, hundred... 100 million viewers watched the most boring and unfucking entertaining Super Bowl possibly of all time. And um, I saw the ratings today were abysmal. Um, and I, I sincerely believe that Tom Brady being in the Super Bowl had something to do with it. He's a very dislikable person. 
Um, well, I don't know about him personally, but just in the whole <laughs> fucking athlete, you know, sports world of it, it's you, just like, oh, Brady it. again, Brady again. It's like nobody wanted to see the Patriots go back, 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 keep going back. It's the same. People get annoyed with the whole, you know, America's team, Cowboys back in the day. Some people don't appreciate greatness like other people or not even appreciate it, but it's just like, it's annoying to some, right? Like, with, yeah, for sure. You don't want to see the same thing. With with Jordan, it was, you know, people were just like, oh, Jordan's the greatest of all time. But then there was all, obviously a section of people who was just like, I'm fucking sick of this shit. <laughs> you know what but I mean? This, though, too. So I was a big Michael Jordan fan. Mm-hmm. I'm still a big Tiger Woods fan. You know, you can't see this when you're, you know, you're listening at home, but I'm wearing my, you know, t- Tiger Woods goat hat. Mm. Um, I appreciate greatness. But what I don't appreciate is like the Alabama kind of greatness when it's artificial. Mm. Um, you know, for Michael Jordan, he just built himself to be great. And yeah. he dominated because he was a great player. T- Tiger Woods, same thing. The Alabama thing is like, okay, you created this great program, but then the program just becomes its own thing where you bring in the greatest players because you're the greatest team. And the system sustains that. So you have Alabama and Clemson, and you have these giant rosters where the best players in the country can just go there and know you're going to be great. It takes away from that. So when you can dial it into one specific player, I think there's a whole lot more value to that. So I've I've always appreciated when it's dialed into like one guy. So I've always appreciated Tom Brady. I think, you know, I appreciate, you know, Bill Belichick. I think he's been able to do a lot with sometimes not so much. So I like that where I don't like it, you know, to what you're saying. I don't like it when it's um, like, like a Lakers thing when, you know, the roster's small and LeBron for how great he is, he can bring in players to help him win a championship. That seems cheap to me. Like so, kind of like Brady did this year. Uh, but did he, I mean, Gronkowski, see, and that's he brought in that one guy. Right. And, I mean, you, you you could make the argument that Leonard Fournette never would have went to that team if, you know, he didn't have Brady. They weren't on the traje- trajectory they were on. Three players but that caught touchdowns. They didn't have great regular seasons. Three players that, that scored touchdowns in that Super Bowl um, went there that's specifically point, yeah. to play with Brady. So, like, it, it – it, but I'm not saying I'm not saying what they did was wrong. Seasons. I'm not saying no, and they didn't for the most part, right? And I don't think that they got Gronk to do that to have a great season. I think they got Gronk to do exactly what he did, and that's get two two very easy touchdown passes from Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. Like, yeah. that's that's it. And and whether that's you know I, that's genius, that's smart because they knew with Tom Brady that they were going to get in. They knew. Carolina was trash this year. Uh, New Orleans didn't look that great. They were getting in. Atlanta didn't look great at all. They knew that, that they were going to the playoffs. So all they needed to do was get Tom Brady there, get Tom Brady there with Gronk. Obviously, A.B., you know, not much experience with Tom Brady, but they had a connection. So it just it worked out exactly according to their plan, and that had to be the plan. It's obvious that that was the plan. It's just like it kind of cheapens it for me a little bit because not only, you know, I'm a Brady hater and have been forever, not because I dislike him and not because I don't appreciate his greatness. It's, it's, it's literally only because Peyton Manning was my favorite quarterback, is my favorite quarterback, and Brady beat him out of the playoffs a bunch of times. So I've just like as a playful thing has always been like, fuck that guy, fuck the Patriots. But it was never like – you know, it turned into, you know, kind of animosity. But, like, once Peyton Manning retired, I really didn't give a shit about Tom Brady and if he went back to the Super Bowl or whatever. Um, I was happy. I, w- I stayed up. It was Saturday night. I was watching the Sixers game. And after the game, um, uh, they, they announced the Hall of Fame inductees and the players of the year and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, I got – emotional when Peyton Manning was announced to get in. Like, that's my guy. You know what I mean? And I woke up Sunday morning, and I made a post about it, and I was like, he's the greatest of all time, in my opinion. 
And, you know, people playfully fucked with me on air. And, and the beginning of the show was, was for them. You know, like, hey, I'm happy that Tom Brady won a Super Bowl. Yeah. I'm not happy that um, it was the worst game I've seen in a long time. I'm not happy that Patrick Mahomes was running for his life the entire game. And I'm not happy that it just wasn't a better game in general. Like, I just, whatever. But as far as Tom Brady winning his seventh ring, you know, good for him. He did it without Belichick. He did it in another conference. He did it on another team. It's kind of wild if you think about it. I mean, it is It's insane. very wild. Dude, it is insane. It's very wild. And and if 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 we get into, not not just speaking of you and me, but anyone else out there, if we ever get into a GOAT conversation about quarterbacks, you won't hear me say that Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback in, of all time, in my opinion. And it's fine that I'm wrong. It just, I'm not going to admit that I'm wrong, but I'm wrong that's fine. That's it. I don't. It's okay, but let me give you some advice from yeah. experience. Mm-hmm. So my favorite baseball player of all time is Nolan Ryan. Right. And I've never had to have the conversation: Is Nolan Ryan the greatest base, the greatest pitcher of all time? Because he's just not. Right. But you could find certain things. He had five thousand seven hundred and fourteen strikeouts, the most of any pitcher in the history of the game. Right. Um. He had he's in the 300 win club, 324 wins, but he also has the most losses. I think 292 losses. Like, there's certain things. It's, I mean, shoot, when the player he's when he's not walking the batter, he was the most unhittable pitcher of all time. You just you you find your lane. You find a way to say, hey, my guy might not be the best, but since when is it cool to root for the best? I mean, you don't want to. It's not punk rock to root for the best. You don't want to be a Michael Jordan fan these days. You don't want to be, you know, a Wayne Gretzky fan. You don't want to be, um, shoot, I don't even know who would be in baseball. I guess, you know, Babe Ruth. It's it's just lame. You want to be that guy on the fringe. Like, they were great. They might not have been the greatest, but they had their own lane. Yeah. So Peyton Manning had his lane. It's... He's punk rock to be a Peyton Manning fan. Dude, it's not punk rock to say your favorite quarterback is Tom Brady. So you, you have that going for you. That's a big deal. It's a big deal. Uh, they were talking about him. I was listening to um, a couple of the analysts and stuff talking about Peyton Manning, and they all unanimously agreed. And this is something that I have always said about him. He was the, He's the smartest quarterback to ever play. He's the smart – like he – he was the one doing all the surprising out there. It was very, very rare that a defense surprised Peyton Manning. I mean, he knew Next when he – Ryan Fitzpatrick, I agree. I mean, yeah. it's just – it's unbelievable the stuff that he was able to do at the line of scrimmage. Um, and in my mind, he changed the game more than than any modern quarterback that we've watched play. I mean, we've – obviously – the same can be said for some of these running quarterbacks and the in the direction that that position is going that could that position is constantly evolving and constantly changing and when Peyton in in his, in his era that was the era of the audible he was the guy that that really ran that no huddle to perfection right. that 2 minute drill to perfection and i mean the struggles that he had to go through during his career he missed the whole season they were rebuilding his neck I mean, the guy played his last couple years in Denver without feeling in his fingertips. That's remarkable to me. And he won a Super Bowl without being able to feel the ball in his hands. That's remarkable. And his wife ordered him some steroids, and he was able to take those steroids, (laughs) and that helped him. That helped him. Hey, that's a strong case for taking steroids. Good for him. I'll say something else about Peyton Manning, too, before we move off the subject. Uh (laughs) that I watched his show on ESPN plus Peyton's places. It's fantastic. No one on this, the planet earth in my mind loves the game of football more than Peyton Manning. And he shows it in every single episode of that show. And it's just great. He's, yeah. he's hysterical. Uh, congratulations to Peyton Manning and uh, for getting into the hall of fame. A quick read out of the other hall of fame inductees this year. We got Peyton Manning, Charles Woodson, Calvin Johnson, Drew Pearson, Alan Feneca, Bill Nunn, 
John Lynch and Tom Flores. That's the uh, 2021 that Hall of makes, Fame. I don't know if that class. makes you feel old. That makes me feel really old. Yeah, oh, dude. my God. Yeah. Calvin Johnson's on that list. Alan Fanica. Like, oh, my Lord. Like, even Peyton Manning being on that list makes me feel really goddamn old. I was just um, – you know how you're on Facebook and they tell you uh, the post you made in the past. And it said on this day, five years ago, whatever it was, I think it was five years ago that Peyton won the Super Bowl. Mm. Mm-hmm. I believe so. And I had a post the next day. It was the Monday after and it told me yesterday. It said, this is from five years ago today. I woke up on a recliner champagne for breakfast. <laughs> And I remember that day. It was a party. A buddy of mine um, was a big, um, shoot, he was a big uh, Panthers fan. And the Panthers got walloped by the Broncos. Yeah. So he had a big party at his house. So, of course, we went wild. And I ended up staying over at his house. And I remember I passed out on the recliner in the living room. And we got up in the morning, and he was so depressed and he bought all this champagne because he had planned on hopefully, you know, <laughs> Cam Newton and his team winning the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And we're all hung over so bad. And he's like, you know what? When else am I going to use this? So we <laughs> popped that champagne, and that was our, our uh, breakfast. breakfast. And I can say, firsthand, hair of the dog totally works. <laughs> but, but my God. Do you come down so hard, so hard. about oh. two hours later? It was brutal, very, very brutal, but hey, it was a good time. I suppose we should talk about the um, NFL honors as well, um, but before we do, just Super Bowl real quick, because really the Super Bowl was trash this year. Um, let's see, the Super Bowl, no, no touchdowns for the Chiefs, three field goals. That's crazy. Thirty-one to nine was the final. Um, I was in bed in the third period, in the third quarter. I once, like towards the end of the third quarter, I was just like, "Well, this is just—it's not funny anymore." <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, like, I there's nothing that I I'm can do. Say, I had one nine on my Super Bowl block for the, for the pool, mm-hmm. so it was it was a very great night for me. Well, there you go. I had the third quarter and the fourth. Wow, it was nice. <laughs> Dude, it's it's thirty one to nine was the final score, um, which is nuts. Because I mean, I'm the and again, just to admit when you're wrong, I think I was on here last week when I said I think this has a chance to be a Chiefs blowout. Dude, yeah, I thought it could be. I mean, I thought that I called the Chiefs to win. I thought that this was going to be. I well, too. I called it, I think if I remember right last week, I thought I said the spread would be like four or something like Chiefs by four. But like Patrick Mahomes, 26 for 49, 270 yards, two picks, zero right. touchdowns, 49.9 QBR. Like I knew that he had two offensive linemen out, and I knew that um, it was going to be a tough game for him. It was going to be tough for them to repeat. Uh, and then I guess Thursday, Andy Reid's son was in an accident, and he's on—he's an offensive coach, I guess. Um, it just kind of felt like the Chiefs were a little bit, you know, in shambles there in that in that sense. But like, I knew that Mahomes didn't go against Brady in the Super Bowl last year. You know what I mean? Like what we talked about in the beginning, Brady brings a whole different, you know, whole different vibe to the game. And then you add Gronk onto it, a healthy Gronk in the Super Bowl, and it's just like, what what else do you need? Um, Brady, 21 for 29, 201 yards, three touchdowns. QB rating of 125.8, it's basically a perfect. essential Brady game. Yeah. I mean, it's like, like he not many passes, nothing but wrong. Full efficient. Yep, very efficient, full efficiency mode. And, like, so – as far as that was concerned, I was in awe of that, but it was just, it was really hard to concentrate on much else besides the fact that Patrick Mahomes looked like he might get killed every snap, like every snap. 
I, I don't have it in front of me, but I would be curious to know how much time on average during that game that Brady had in the pocket versus how much time Patrick Mahomes had in the pocket. Because just, just by, you know, being a nobody and looking at it, it was staggering the difference between the two. Brady looked comfortable all night. Right. All That's night. the thing, like, you know, I don't get paid to do this. You know, I, you know, write about sports in my spare time and, you know, just doesn't exactly pay the bills. So when it came down to Super Bowl time, like to watch the damn game, I can't tell you, like, the uh, nuances of, you know, what went on, the X's and O's and all that kind of thing. To be totally honest, I was quite drunk during most of the game. So <laughs> I can't tell you exactly what went down as far as, like, the pressure on Brady. I can analyze the stats after the fact. I can tell you what I saw from what I saw. And I did do my best to watch the damn game. But, um, you know, it's just, it's not my job to watch these things. So I, I, I couldn't tell you from that vantage point, you know, how much time Brady had according to, you know, how much time Patrick – Mahomes had, but it just seems like Brady, he knows when to get rid of the damn ball. Yep. And he's always been good, good at that. And it's infuriating when you have a quarterback on your own team, your own favorite team. Let's say for us, it's the Eagles who doesn't seem to know how to do, do that. Yeah. And before him, before Carson Wentz, you know, Foles got ran out of town before the Super Bowl because he couldn't get rid of the ball in time. Right. And before him, Michael Vick couldn't get rid of the ball in time. So it was just, it's been a, consistent thing Brady's just good at that and maybe it's the offensive line he just keeps going places where they have a great offensive line maybe it is um I don't know what it is they, they protect him so to be able to well do that yeah they protect him so well the refs protect him so well as well <laughs> I mean it's 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 just different when you're playing Tom Brady and you can tell like you can you can easily see that it's just a different ball game when Tom Brady's involved and you have to bring your a plus game in order to make it through. And that's not just as the opposing quarterback, that's most definitely the opposing defense, the opposing coach, everything, everybody has to bring their a plus game because he is. And, and that's, that's really it. I mean, yeah. I'm not surprised at the outcome, um, obviously I wish it was different, but I mean, what the hell else can we do, but move on to next season. And, but before we do, I want to, uh, acknowledge the NFL honors, uh, some of the most valuable people in the league, most valuable player, Aaron Rodgers got his, uh, third, uh, his third MVP, which crazy to me. You don't. You don't agree. You don't think. So? I don't agree with that at, at all. I think Patrick Mahomes is clearly the, the MVP of the, the league. I mean, forget the last game. Obviously, we just saw the Super Bowl, and it's like, all right, he's exposed. No, Patrick Mahomes is the MVP. We talked about this b before. Aaron Rodgers, he did it with kind of smoke and mirrors all year. I mean, Patrick Mahomes threw for I don't know how many more yards per game. It was over fifty more than Aaron Rodgers. It was just but he didn't throw as many touchdowns, but it just, okay. Aaron Rodgers, you look at his stats now compared to what he was. He's kind of like, you know, to bring it back to baseball, he's like the aging p pitcher who can no longer throw 99 miles per hour. And he's figuring it out. He's throwing 91 and he's throwing spitballs, learning a new curveball. Ch change ups. He's throwing whatever he can, trying to stick around. That's Aaron Rodgers to me. He's not the same guy. Right. He had a great year. The statistics say he had a great year, but if you put these statistics to what he was, a shell of himself. I mean, it's not. He had a great year. He should be number two. But Patrick Mahomes, I think voters just get used to the fact that Patrick Mahomes is the best, so he gets discounted in the same way Barry Bonds did when he was in his prime. Well, no. Yes, the same way Patrick LeBron Mahomes James. Still the best. Like LeBron James hasn't won a league MVP in how long? Exactly. You know. So, I mean, and he's still the best. I'm not yeah, say, right. I'm not saying that I disagree. Um I don't know. I, I mean, I he didn't watch a lot of touchdowns. So it's like, right. oh, look at all the touchdowns he threw. Well, right. I mean, 
<laughs> Lamar Jackson threw like 50 touchdowns and he's not very great at throwing footballs. So it's like, <laughs> right, right. How much, how much emphasis are you going to put on that one stat? Patrick Mahomes is the best player in football. It's just a fact. And he, sh- as long as he puts up seasons like he just did, he should be MVP every damn year. Yeah. Offensive player of the year, Derrick Henry from the uh, Titans, running back from the Titans. I love that because it, it, it makes it so you can congratulate a guy who accomplished something amazing and might not have been the MVP, but it's great to you know have a, an acknowledgement for that kind of thing. 2,000 yards is amazing. 2,000, yep, 397 total touches with uh, twenty one over 2,100 yards uh, from scrimmage and 17 total touchdowns. Um, that's pretty incredible stuff. Defensive player of the year, Aaron Darnold, uh, defensive tackle from the Rams. Uh, let's see, 14 tackles for a loss and 13 and a half sacks, 28 quarterback hits, four forced fumbles, and one fumble yeah, recovery. There, there's a lot of talk out there like TJ Watt from the Steelers should have been that guy. And if you s- selectively choose your stats, okay. And J.J. Watt was one of those guys who went on social media and said, you know, I'm not going to say one thing or the other, but look at how many categories T.J. Watt is leading fine. But there are other stats that clearly work in Donald's favor. So, I mean, it just depends on what you look at. Right. It could go e- either way. I would be okay with Watt, okay with <laughs> Donald, but that's a big controversy right now. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Justin Herbert, the quarterback from the Chargers. Uh, oh. Through four in 15 games, he posted a rookie record, 31 touchdowns, uh, 10 interceptions, 7.3 yards per attempt, and 98.3 passer rating. He also rushed for 234 yards and five touchdowns. It's pretty impressive. He's awesome. Uh, defensive Rookie of the Year, Chase Young, defensive end from Washington. Let's see. Yeah, I don't love that, but... 7.5 sacks, recovered three fumbles, and made 10 tackles for a loss in 15 games. It's pretty impressive. I don't follow the defensive stats as much, but yeah. I feel like you could have done better. I mean, if he wasn't such a high pick, would he have been the defensive player of the year? I mean, with those yeah. stats? Yeah. Really? That's a good question. I'm not impressed. Comeback player of the year, uh, Alex Smith, quarterback from Washington. It really... Couldn't have been anybody else. His story is just so crazy to me. The fact that they were about to amputate his leg and yeah. he's playing pro football again is really something serious. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, last thing, coach of the year, Kevin Stefanski for the Browns. Um, obviously, the Browns snapped their playoff streak of not being in the playoffs, and they also got a big win in the playoffs. So congratulations to all those guys. Sure. It's big. Dude, uh, we're doing NBA all week next week. Let's do go to the week and get out of here. It's we keep trying to do NBA. NBA. Sports presents <laughs> the greatest of all time. Of the week. My clear cut go to the week this week was nobody who played football this weekend. Instead, it was the most entertaining part of the entire thing and that's the weekend the weekend put on a uh, visually stunning halftime performance i really enjoyed it i'm also a fan of his so it was easy for me to enjoy it um he's got a great story you know high school dropout troubled youth homelessness at, at, at a young age and look at him he's playing in the super bowl like biggest stage having to be the worst ratings probably ever for a super bowl but you know there it is it uh just a really cool artist. I, I've I've been following him since his very first like mixtapes that he's been putting out and um I'm just I'm 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 happy for him. He's come a long way and he's a pop mega superstar and uh I just I really dig his music. I dig him what I know about him, you know, as an artist. Just a really cool dude and the whole fucking Super Bowl sucked, but that was a pretty cool bright spot. So weekend. That's my go to the week. All right. Well, I mean, I'm going to obviously choose Brady, but to put that aside, <laughs> we need to expound on that. We talked enough about that. You know, I like to pride my, or I, I try to think that I pride myself on admitting when I'm wrong. Mm. So I'm going to take this opportunity to piggy, piggyback on your go to the week. 
and say when I told you you were wrong when you said that he spent $7 million on the halftime show. Mm, yes. And I'll tell you this. I spent all damn weekend Googling this every day to try to find out that it wasn't true. And to this moment, it is apparently true that he spent $7 million. I don't know how, I don't know why, but I was wrong to say that he didn't. And, <laughs> you know, I was, I was in the wrong. He apparently did. All the evidence points to that. And whether, you know, did you enjoy it? Did yeah, you, I did, what did you think? hear what he was singing? Yeah. Too well, that, I feel like but, that was the biggest, uh, uh, gripe from a lot of people that weren't fans or didn't know much about him musically is that they just couldn't hear him. And, and I agree that that did suck that you couldn't hear him. I thought that that kind of, that sucked, but I mean, forget all that. I mean, I have to respect, I mean, if he went out there he, and, and again, I don't want to say if, he went out there and spent $7 million of his own money because he wanted this to be exactly right. And, you know, that ha happens in art. You might sometimes put everything you have into something and people just say, hey, it's not our thing or it's not great or yeah. we have this gripe or that gripe or maybe you love it. Whatever it is, you put everything you have into it. You got to respect it. I remember it was um, – shoot, I can't remember. It was one of those guys who was um, – I should have this name, but he was one of the, um, uh, shoot, uh, uh, Deuce Bigelow guy who was, um, the actor in that. Oh shit. Um, Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo guy, whatever it was. Rob Snyder. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. So I, I listened to an interview with him and they were telling, they were asking him like, what were you thinking with this mo movie? And he was like, y you know what, man? Like everybody shat on that movie so hard. I and loved they it. hated it so much. I loved but it. I everything I had into it. I wrote the movie. I put money into it. I tried hard and it hurt my feelings. Like when people <laughs> hated it. Yeah. And that's why. And he said, I can't hate on anybody's movies because they're putting everything they have into it. If sure. they're trying hard. So I kind of feel the same thing. My thing was like, I didn't believe he put $7 million. Sure. He, he, he did. <laughs> and I'm also I'm not here to say whether it was great or not. It wasn't exactly my thing. I didn't, you know, get it exactly. I thought it was cool, but um, it looked cool. I think it. I think it looked really cool. I mean, and, I mean, aside from the part where I almost threw up when he went inside the stage, <laughs> I, I, yeah. everything else, like the fireworks and the big screen I, with the moon and stuff, I thought it was really, really cool. I can't tell you how much I respect. Where like he had, he pumped in more money because he wanted it right. Yeah. So that's perfect that's great that's you got awesome. a, you got I a lot that. of got a lot of criticism i even saw one clown on my timeline calling him uneducated and this and that and it's a real shame i mean i i think that the weekend as an artist was you know put out a lot of work this year and uh wanted to make the super bowl a fun experience for everybody even in a socially right. distanced environment and blah 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 and um i think he really did a great job at that so it was good and i get it like I appreciate that, but I'm like a simple guy. Like when, like sure. my favorite one of all time was Prince. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yep. Went out there and just bawled on the guitar. Mm -hmm. If you go back and look at that one, there wasn't a whole lot of pyrotechnics, wasn't a whole lot of yeah. extra stuff. I didn't go into that a Prince fan. Right. I came out of that a huge Prince fan. I did not re realize he possessed that kind of talent. But that's me. Like my personal thing is like I want to see a dude rock out on a guitar. And yeah. that's it. Yeah. So, I mean, it depends on what your thing is. There's a bunch right. of people that had a problem with the Prince thing. So it's, it's so hard because it's the one event where you have to please everyone. And it's right. an impossible test. It's an impossible test. Yeah. Well, Kevin Reevy, great job this week. As always, dude, thank you so much for spending Super. your time with me, man. And, uh, Hey, enjoy your vacation, Reevy. I, uh, hope you have a good week. Uh, we're always sponsored by Unomia CBD. Go to unomiacbd.com. Use promo code MBN. Get 20% off free shipping and a free gift. Check out mbnnetwork.com. It's never been easier for you to find your new favorite podcast. Go back and listen to news this week. I had an awesome interview with Travis View from the QAnon Anonymous podcast. It went really great. Go check it out, everybody. Have a great week. We're talking NBA next week. We'll see you next time. I just saw Kevin Reeves' ass. He just <laughs> moved me. <laughs> Vacation! <laughs>